Good day everyone. So especially to the person who instructs us this Mangshe. So again we will discuss about English literature. Okay, so for our objective, first is to be able to introduce background or more info about English literature. So where is that we will know more about English literature. So para mas makilala pa natin no, ng gusto kung ano ba talaga yung English literature. So second, to be able to answer some sort of question. So like for example, does English literature still survive today? And no, how or what makes it stand till now in modern world? So in this discussion, no, malalaman natin kung nabubuhay pa ba ang English literature till ngayon o kung nabubuhay man paano at bakit. Okay, so third is that we need to compare and contrast each studies and personality. So, diba, I've mentioned last last week on our report, diba, that there's a different era or period occurs. So, there's a development and changes, no? So, pag may development, may changes talaga. So, fourth is that not the most notable works of that particular period or era. So, after that, we will have, we will give a moral and reflection to it and a brief overview about that that particular work of that notable author. In our overview, these are the discussions that we will have in our report. So, though there are more about our report, but I just put it in a simpler way. So... I'm also looking forward for your feedback and reaction after that. Introduction to English Literature So, English literature is the literature which is distinctly written in the English language, as opposed to differing languages. English literature includes literature composed in English by writers not necessarily from England nor primarily English-speaking nations. And there, until the early 19th century, this article deals with literature from Britain written in English. Then America starts to produce major writers and works in their literature. In the 20th century, America and Ireland produced many of the most significant works of literature in English. And after World War II, writers from the former British Empire also began to challenge writers from Britain. So meaning, no, ang kritikang English raw ay English literature na malinaw na nakasulat sa wikang English, no? So compare sa ubang wika, no, sa, sa English literature raw ang kinabibilangan ay binubuo ng English ng manunulat. So, dili po sila from England, no? Ang mga pangahing bansa na nagsasalita ng English, no? So, kay English literature man siya, so dapat kinahalan niyo siyang English. Okay, so let's continue. So, who has an idea now on what's really an English literature? So, what is English literature? So, English literature is a broad term used in many educational settings. It refers to the body of work written or spoken in the English language. It includes prose, poetry, and oral tradition. Okay, no? So, in its very broad term, no? So, daghag ways na tong magamit ang English literature, no? Sa lain-laing klaseng settings, in educational settings, no? Like, for example, sa prose, poetry, diba? One of the, in, one of an English literature man sila, diba? Nga examples. Geographical background. First, Great Britain is the largest of the British Isle. On Great Britain are located three constituent countries of the United Kingdom. Scotland in the north, England in the south, and East Wales in the west. There are also numerous smaller islands off the coast of Great Britain. The British Isle is an archipelago consisting of the two large islands of Great Britain and Ireland and many smaller surrounding islands. By tradition, it also includes the Channel Island, although they are physically closer to the continental mainland. The full list of islands in the British Isle includes over 6,000 islands, of which 51 have an area larger than 20 km. Though it's not yet that very important in these topics. So, for further discussion, let's have the next discussion. Literature definition and meaning. If we go with the terminology of the word literature, literature has been taken from the Latin word litera. The word litera is the plural of letter. 
So literature is the art of the written work in the form of prose, poetry, fiction, or non-fiction, as what I've said earlier. So literature may be divided by language and periods of era, diba? as I've explained in our last discussion, diba? No, next and uh, last last week. But we can understand it in the following words. Literature is the knowledge and experience of human life. Written in the form of prose, poetry, fiction, or non-fiction, which can fulfill anyone's life with knowledge, joy, and happiness. Next is, the literature is the composition of those golden words which may brighten our life as a golden if we adopt it. Very well said, no? So it's, it really clearly stated there. Aim in learning literature to know men, their soul, and their actions. So, qualities of literature is that it is artistic, suggestive, and permanent. Diba? Permanent. Kaya nga, diba, it, English literature still stur- survive today in our modern world. Importance of literature. Literature preserves the ideals of people and ideals of love, faith, duty, friendship, and freedom, reverence, are the part of the human life most worthy of preservation. So why study literature? First is literature has aesthetic and cognitive value. So matutunan natin dito ang aesthetic and cognitive value na kung ano talaga yung literature. Second is literature has much influence on the English language. So diba English literature? So, it means it really has work on English areas. Areas rather. So Last is that literature can bred the students' sensitivity to the use of English, as what I've said, no? English literature. English literature has been divided by the periods and time to time it got growth and development. So, diba, na-explain ko na yun na there's a different era and per- or period, diba? There's a changes and every every changes, there's a development of that particular period or era. So, nag-change talaga yung era. So, may pa bago-bagong era, no? So, like for example nito, di ba? Na-explain ko na to yung English literature timeline nung last discussion natin, yung last meeting, di ba? Napakita ko na yun sa inyo kung ano yun. May different era talaga at period. And there's a, there's something happens in that particular period or era as what I've explained last last week's discussion. Pero ang tatakin lang natin ay itong apat, yung Old English or Anglo-Saxon Literature, Renaissance Period, Late Renaissance, and Victorian Era. And the most notable works of this particular era or period. Old English Literature Period. So the first time literature was written in Old English. So we use the term of the Old English, di ba? literature when we start talking about so old english so ito talaga yung pinaka start niya so i'm going to gather the old period in what i call best points ito yung pinaka best points ng old english literature period first epic form was the most popular achievement of this age second old english literature is also called anglo-saxon literature to be ex- further explained by Jerome later on so the period of old english literature started from 7 century to 1066. The major works are effect poetry, hagiography, sermon, and Bible translations. Beowulf, the effect poem, is the important work of Old English and it has gained National Effect Award in England. Most famous poets of the age were Ka Edmund, Vid, Alfred the Great, and St. Wealth. Ka Edmund was the most famous poet and called father of the old poetry in 17th century. There is only one poem of nine lines available named him. So it was named, made by Ka Edmund, no? the, the poetry him. So this is the example of him by Ka Edmund. So now let us praise the guardian of the kingdom of heaven, the might of the creator, and the thought of his mind. The work of the glorious father, now he the internal lord, established the beginning of every wonder. For the sons of men, he the holy creator first made he the holy creator first made made heaven as a roof, then the keeper of mankind, the internal lord. God Almighty afterwards made the middle Hello, world and the earth I am the next departure so about English literature so my topic is about Beowulf by Anglo-Saxon so Beowulf bought 400 Anglo-Saxon texts 
on from this era including many beautiful poems many of these of wild battles and heroic journey the famous poem Beowulf tells the story of of a bloodthirsty monster called Brenda so Beowulf is much admired for the richness of the of its poetry for these beautiful sounds of the words and the imaginative quality of the description so Beowulf summary or my own perspective and my understanding about the story so first is Beowulf face Grendel so si Grendel is so analysis of the epic poem Beowulf so ang unang nakalaban ni Beowulf is si Grendel so si Grendel napatay ni Beowulf then sunod si ang ang mama ni Grendel si ang mama ni Grendel ay nag revenge lang siya sa yung anak sa yung namatay ang anak then napatay na napatay din siya ni Beowulf the third is yung dragon namatay napatay ni Beowulf yung dragon pero napatay din siya nung dragon so that's the story all about so Beowulf is the first great wars of English national literature composed between 700 and 750 but depicts earlier time period early 6th century so an example of heroic literature and as such as composed of many traditional motifs and recurring elements Beowulf it was written in Old English it's an oh, I, Old English is an ancient form of the language that slowly evolved into the English new spoken or modern English so it is the oldest surviving epic poem in the English language so it is set in the pagan Scandinavia in the 6th century so, Beowulf names means bear so Beowulf in effect equal to bear so based on my research from old English be bio or be and wolf wolf it is because because the brown bear is likely to have become extinct in Britain shortly so British author named their main character after an ambiguous riddle about the bear so that's why right. The epic is a mythical and literary record of the formative stage of English civilization. So, it is because it is the first great work of the English national literature. Beowulf is a story handed down orally for generations, naturally with the changes and embellishment. So, it has 3,200 3, lines long. So, as generation passed by from Old English to New English or Modern English, this 3,200 3, relates the exploit, exploits of Beowulf heroic acts and his successive battles with a monster named Grendel and Grendel's revengeful mother and with the dragon. From, so, from poet unknown, so a scholar thinks it, it was originally told by someone of Pagan. So, this Beowulf story has its roots in a Pagan but because almost all Anglo-Saxons had converted to Scots to Christianity. So that's why. So, the author of, of Beowulf was an anonymous Anglo-Saxon poet. So, Anglo-Saxon is not a person. So, there were members of Germanic people. They were a group of people. So, why is Beowulf an important works of literature? So, I have this 
of why is BWOF an important part of the trade? So, as BWOF shows law and order and the responsibility of the leader. So, on the story, BWOF many, BWOF, many people of the time believed that death would be the same way and there was nothing they could do about it. BWOF in the poem shows courage on facing his foe. The loyalty and honesty is what he gained on fighting those foe. So the poem shows which which side is good and the bad. Naturally, Beowulf on the good side. So both have connection because Beowulf keeps on bragging about his accomplishment. So that's why. Beowulf as an archetypal example of an epic which shows long narrative adventures of a central hero with supernatural powers uh, worldwide cosmic setting major battle scene discussion of heroes weaponry uh, so because Beowulf has all the most important characteristics. So, Beowulf is an example of all English poetry. It has four bit rhythm, no rhyme, alteration, kennings, and kaisuras. Be Beowulf is an example of English poetry. In conclusion, is that Beowulf is the oldest surviving Germanic epic and the longest old English poem. It was likely composed between 700 and 750. So, Renaissance period, yeah, 1500 to 1660. So, the Renaissance period in the history of English literature is also known as the Elizabeth period or the age of Shakespeare. So, it is, in fact, the golden age in the history of English literature. After the Middle Age, in Europe came the Renaissance, meaning revival or, or revert. So as a result, the darkness of the Middle Age was replaced by the enlightenment of the human's mind with the revival of learning, which the Renaissance prompted. So the Elizabeth, the Elizabethan period or the age of Shakespeare. So the term Elizabethan period is refers to the English history of Queen Elizabeth. The first so reign the term of the age of Shakespeare is due to William uh, the term the age of Shakespeare is due to William Shakespeare. So he lived from 15 uh, 1567 to 1616 on which him being a part of the Elizabethan era the major characteristics of the Renaissance was its focus on humanism and man's concern with himself as an object of observation the Renaissance actually started in Italy by Dante, Bonifat, Boca, Shaw, and Pet Petrarch. However, it became popular in Europe during the Elizabethan period. Besides focusing on the study of mankind, Renaissance had numerous subordinate trends which were actually the significant aspect of humanism. So this include the re rediscovery of classical antiquity, particularly of the ancient Greece, the re rediscovery of the external universe, and it's important for man, you know, the problems of human personality, the enhanced sensitivity to formal beauty and the cultivation of the aesthetic sense the belief that man men are responsible for their own action so instead of looking up to some higher authority for guidance as was as was done in the middle ages the writers of the renaissance period found guidance from within the changes between the Middle Ages and the Renaissance was characterized by great socio-economic, political, and religious changes. So just like what I have mentioned earlier, 
was because the Renaissance major characteristic was its focus on humanism, on which gave the people more freedom and input. So, next of the English literature best book is Of Stories, authored by Francis Bacon. So, Francis Bacon, born on January 22, 1561, in London, England. In his late teens, he practiced of law in Trinity College. At 23, he became a member of the House of Commons. During his career as counsel and statesman, Bacon often wrote for the court. In 1584, he wrote his first political memorandum. A letter of advice by to Queen Elizabeth. So in 1592, to celebrate the anniversary of the Queen's coronation, he wrote an entertaining speech in praise of knowledge. The year 1597 marked Bacon's first publication, a collection of essays about politics. So the collection was later expanded and republished in 1612 and 1625. His career flourished under King James I, but later scandals ended his life as a politician. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London, stripped of all offices and honors for having accepted bribes as Chief Justice of England. He was also a philosopher and scientist by nature, known as father of empiricism. Francis Bacon established the Baconian method to investigate natural science. His approach led to the development of the scientific method which is still used. Still used. He died on April 9, 1626 the age of 65 because of bronchitis. Of Stories is composed of 500 words. So, Francis Bacon said that Of Story Of Stat <laughs> Of Stories I, Of Studies is composed of 500 words. So, by, Francis Bacon said that of studies is all about education, knowledge, and balance. Taken from his essays collection, the reader realizes from the beginning of the essay that Bacon believes that studying has three ben benefits. Bacon also argues that to spend too much time in study is sloth or lazy. So let's have an analysis to for an example of or we will give two two definition of the of the paragraph of the of studies so for example so studies serve for delight for ornament and for ability their chief use for delight is an is in privateness and retiring for ornament is in discourse and for ability is in the judgment and disposition of business so, explanation delight some people gain knowledge for pleasure people who acquire knowledge for delight do so because they enjoy it for instance those who play sports they practice and learn they practice and learn about this about their sports because they want to not because they have to ornament some people who gain knowledge for decoration these people only want to improve themselves in the eye of others these are the people who try to better themselves by bragging about their achievements and accomplishment in conversation with others so number three is ability they want to show that they are able to do something ability is widely used in the area of business 
those who are well educated rather than those who are not better run a company so there are three main points of this uh, of the paragraph one is study serves for delight the other is ornament and the last is the ability so for delight means people gain knowledge for pleasure so for ornament study serves for ornament means people gain knowledge for decoration and the ability so study serves for ability means they want to show that they are able to do something that's the ability in the next sentence says that to spend too much time in studies is slot to use them too much for ornament is affection to make judgment wholly by their rules is the humor of a scholar so setting aside long hours in a day to study will make a man lazy overuse of the wisdom is to analyze may make the man appear pretendous and arrogant sticking too much to rules to assess situation and decide on action may invite derision from others so that's the second sentence so of studies so each of the sentence has different meanings so in summary uh, of study serves as manual in every aspect on which is very important to study so that they have knowledge to be gained so of studies emphasizes the importance of knowledge open-mindedness and theory empowering skills francis bacon said of studies serves as reading of books as emerging in finding man's purpose in life so the main point of all of it is that there were there will always be new discoveries that will be all thank you
was published in 1599 and gained popularity because it best described an everlasting love. This poem show how his love to be with his beloved forever. From the first line, Victorian era. It was the period of Queen Victoria's reign. It was a long period of peace, prosperity, and refined the national self-confidence for British. Queen Victoria had the longest reign in British history because in her young age to be exact, at the age of 18, she already became a queen but died because of depression after losing her husband, Victorian literature have four types of writing, realist, naturalist, the novel, and poetry. Now, what is the difference between realism and naturalism? Realism portrays reality about everyday life. In writing realism, they include families, religion, and social reform. While naturalism 
does not believe in spiritualism, and all knowledge about the world came from a scientific investigation. In the 19th century, novel became the leading form of literature. Victorian novel always centralized a moral lesson to be learned. During this era, it idealized the notion of hard work, perseverance, love, and luck. Victorian poetry, some important poets include Elizabeth Barrett Browning. In the most popular works of her is How Do I Love Thee? At this moment, we were going to discuss about Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Elizabeth Barrett Browning was an English poet of the Victorian era. She wrote a poetry from about the age of six. Her first adult collection of poems was published in 1838 and she wrote prof prolifically about 1841 and 1844 producing poetry translation and prose Elizabeth volume poems brought her great success attracting the admiration of the writer Robert Browning his husband her husband their corresponding courtship and marriage were carried out in secret for fear of of her father's disapproval. Elizabeth learned Hebrew at the age of 10, and because of that, she was be able to read about the Old Testament from beginning to end. One of the greatest achievements of Elizabeth Browning is the poem entitled How Do I Love Thee? It is a famous love poem and was first published in a collection sonnet from the Portuguese in 1850. The poem deals with the speaker's passionate adoration of her beloved with vivid pictures of her eternal bond that will keep her connected to her beloved even after death. As this poem is about love, the speaker count how she adore her love to, to her, love is a powerful force that can conquer everything in the universe. As, as of her, she expressed her love with details, the way her love will get stronger with every passing phase of love or every downfall of life. At the outset, she attempted to discuss the deep of her passion about her love and her political ideals. Later, she expressed the unique quality of her enduring love. She says that her love will get better after that. Major themes in How Do I Love Day is love and faith because primarily it concerns about the love and how significant she have to her partner. She expressed her deep and innocent love in a sophisticated way. Also, she she's, she show his intense love. She's she let him feel how he loved and how her feeling gets stronger with the time pass. 